Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Engage Culture Podcast. It is I, Pastor Israel, your host, and I'm so excited just to share with you this exciting story and give you some biblical principles that are going to take you to another level. Now, our story today revolves around uh, a young lady by the name of uh, Mohao Seshweni. And she's a young lady who grew up in Polokwane Limpopo and she moved to Pretoria to do her studies and she got a qualification in the world of accounting. And after graduating, she got a fantastic job at an auditing firm. And while she was working there, one of her workmates came to her with an interesting problem. She told her, listen friend, I'm about to be married in a couple of weeks and I, my cooking sucks. I, I, my cooking sucks and I need you to teach me how to cook uh, traditional South African uh, meals. And I just want to give you guys a cheat code. South Africa has the best food in the world. I mean, particularly our African traditional food is some of the best. And one of my own pet peeves is that we don't have an industrial scale availability of African traditional food in South Africa and as well globally. Whenever I travel around the world, it's very hard to find African traditional food in the same way you can find Chinese food, you can find Indian food, you can find Italian food, you can find everybody's food, but you just can't find uh, local African, South African traditional food. So her friend came to her and told her, listen friend, I've, I need to learn how to cook. I'm about to get married and I need to learn how to cook quickly. And everywhere I've been, all they teach us is how to cook Asian food, Italian food. They, uh, and there's nowhere in this city where they teach us how to cook African traditional food. And that's very sad. Imagine, in our own country, there's nowhere you can learn how to cook African food. And she told her friend just as a joke that, listen, I'm about to get married and I don't want to be known as the lazy Makoti, or, or what that means is I'd want to be known as the lazy bride. And so she began to teach her friend how to cook and she got the idea to start a brand and to start a company known as the lazy Makoti. So what she did is she actually saved up money from her workplace and she went to go train in culinary arts. She went for one year to train how to become a chef. And after becoming a chef, she actually went to intern and to work a job um, at the Saxon Hotel under one of the most amazing chefs um, in South Africa and she studied under him and then she took all that knowledge and she used it to develop um, the African traditional meals and African traditional menu and through this experience she actually started a brand and a company known as the Lazy Makoti and if you go to one of our bookstores her book the Lazy Makoti cookbook is one of the best selling books in South Africa and I've, this is the story I just want us to really break into and understand the power of work. In Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10, there's one of my favorite scriptures in the world. It says, whatsoever your hands find to do, work at it with all thy might. Do it with all thy power. And this then, ladies and gentlemen, this is the basis of prosperity. Prosperity doesn't just come from a vacuum. Prosperity doesn't just come from going to church, shouting, speaking in tongues, giving money and all these things. Prosperity, a key component of prosperity is work. God's design for us as human beings is to work. And our work is the vehicle which God delivers our prosperity to us. We don't just prosper from an abstract concept. There's things that we have to do. And it's very important that you define your work. And you got to watch the, the, the message you did last week on career guidance. It is key. And I'm building on that right here, that prosperity is connected to work because God blesses the works of your hand. In Deuteronomy 28 verse 12, he actually tells us that the Lord blesses the work of our hands. He blesses the work that we do. And it's very important that you are able to define your work and understand that it is through your work that God is going to deliver your success. It's through your work that God is going to deliver your prosperity. It's through your work that all the revenue you're praying for is going to come from. So based on this young lady's story, the Lazy Makoti, the first thing, the first touch point is she developed a base skill. She went into the world of accounting and that was a base skill. That was something she could do to generate an income. And she got a job in the world of auditing. And then from there, when she got the idea to start this company, she didn't just uh, automatically just leave her work. She actually went 
and invested time in developing another skill for the next stage in her career. And the reason why she did that is she didn't want to fall for the curse of the middleman. And sometimes people in business always want to start business on the strength of somebody else's skill or somebody else's resource. And the best way to, if you're going to go into the world of business, the best way to build it is make it an extension of whatever skill that you have. That way no one can hold you hostage and you're able to deliver um, to clients the value that they are seeking. So she went and she studied and she developed this new skill. And then from there, she went out and started this tremendous business that is doing so well and creating an impact in our nation. So I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. Invest time in developing skill. Invest time in upskilling yourself. And trust God to bless the work of your hands because the blessing of the Lord is going to come through your skill and through applying your skill in work. So it's very simple. Get a skill and apply it. Get a skill and work. Get a skill and work. Get a skill and work. That's the formula of prosperity. There are not a 10,000 things you have to do. There's not a 100 billion things you have to do. There's not... Uh, a whole bunch of stuff that's stopping you. All you've got to do, my brother or my sister, is develop a skill, go out there and do it. The Bible in the text I read, he said, do it with all your might. In other words, be focused, obsess about it, become great at it, whatever work, whatever profession you're in, whether you're an accountant, whether you're an engineer, whether you're in technology, whether whatever work that you do, whether you're a designer, whether you're into fashion, whatever it is that you do, work hard at it, become very good at it so that you can add so much value to people and receive so much value. Father, God, I pray today that you bless your children. Bless the work of their hands. I pray, Father, that even as your children are navigating their careers, give them wisdom, Father, so that they can impact and become everything that you want them to be.